Birmingham. Uh, the maid's taking Hayley into the Norse word for Leah, and uh, Hayley in the Norse uh, means hero, so the family's like living up to your heroes. Um, I'm Leah Rakiri, age 21. <laughs> I'm Tom Patton, I'm 19, going on 30. I'm Jane Murphy, and I'm 22. Now, Mr. Keane, unfortunately, can't be here, is uh, 21. What's your favourite thing about touring? Uh, spending time with mates. Um, it's just really nice. Like, we don't get too much time outside of actual touring to actually spend good quality time together. Um, so, yeah, just spending time with, uh, as mates, just going out and enjoying yeah, ourselves. Yeah, really, really like, shows. We appreciate each other every day, and when we actually get to be together like this 24 7, it's, we actually don't always want to kill each other. We spend a lot of time together, and we do love each other. And like, we have the best time, so there's nothing more in the world we want to be doing than this, otherwise you couldn't do it. Some of, the, some of the best ideas about taking Hadrian's together whilst we're actually on tour. Yeah. So, when we're actually all together, spending a lot of time together, so that's really the best thing. Yeah. Sitting in the dressing room and laughing and stuff. Yeah. Solid. Sitting in endless band during this event, just doing it for four and a half hours. Getting cabin and, fever. And cabin, yeah, cabin fever happens in events. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's the best part of touring that and, you know, gigs. <laughs> actually plays with people. Yeah. yeah. It's always good fun. This is from Jasmine Louise. She said, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you when travelling between venues? Hi Jasmine, <laughs> I can answer this. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Um, we played a gig in Southampton and we were travelling back up to play Birmingham the next day. Um, we broke down. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. You broke down. Me and Tom left early yeah. to get home to sleep. And now we were stopped a little bit longer to go for a curry. Yeah, we went for a curry. Uh, it was me, Andy, Alistair in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the van. People here in the van, yeah. Yeah, and we had. And uh, it broke down on the side of the road. Um, the point where he's actually smoking out the front before he's going to set on fire and really quickly, in a matter of seconds, we loaded half the gear out of the van um, onto the side um, of the motorway and uh, yeah, that's probably the word. Yeah. That will last night. And then how long did you have to wait until we got picked up? Like eight hours at a service station? Or yeah, eight hours. We, me and Tom got to Tom's of like half two and we were like, where are you guys? Like, oh, we're, we're very down, we just had some venue and we're like, oh, we're in bed, sorry. Um, then and that's sleep at the venue next day. That was last night because our van's packed like Tetris, and my mate sits on the top like yeah, you know, like the icing on the cake. And so I'll, I'll we have a mid joke. Laughing. Everything was laughing. It was we, hilarious. We really so funny, and then suddenly break, bang! I get hit in the back of the head by a bass guitar. Suddenly dead silence. We also had, we and then we laughed again. Yeah, about half twenty. Well. But also the time, like the first day, we were driving up to Newcastle, and there was. One, there was, we were driving past the car that was on fire, and we were like, okay, we missed that one, so don't explode. And then we drove driving more, and then two cars literally collided next to our van, so we just missed that as well. So that's quite, that's quite a few in-depth stories. Yeah, so there's then, three. We, we may have any more. That's all the travelling was fine. Is it the Jasmine as well? There you go. That's that's the yeah, Jasmine. But the travelling is fine, and we need to play a half hour every day, and it's always really fun. So. What's the funniest thing that's ever happened on stage? Um, oh, there's a few. Alistair literally split in his trousers from there to there, which is hilarious. Alistair split in his trousers from here down, but he literally is like this. He's a lot of us, hasn't he? It's maybe Alistair. Um, falling over I'm on falling stage over when we played, uh, when we played yeah, on the fly, he literally landed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, hardest I've ever seen. I broke a bass drum and then we, we, jammed, we jammed out a few tracks. That was always fun. What else? That's the most funny thing. Most funny thing. Stay fun to the two of me and Tommy. Banter. Yeah, we're going to that. Funny for who? For us or for other people? Are they laughing at us or are we laughing amongst ourselves? We're laughing at you. Oh, laughing at us. Oh, oh, so, so, so not funny. Well. <laughs> okay. Getting hit in the back of the head with the tars is always great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's about it really. But yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. everything goes to pop. Yeah. Usually. That's quite funny for other people, I guess. Next question. Who's that for? I just remember. Thank you, Jess. Continue. Okay. Is this from Jess Tux? Hi, Jess. Tux. Tux. If you could pick a, a country to play in, where would it be? America, obviously. America. America. Or China, like Hong Kong, somewhere. It's crazy. No, America. Sorry. No, you go America. America. American Water. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. American Water, like, yeah, but then you go to a festival in like China, you play to like 50,000 people in one city, and then it's different entities, the spectrum, but I think America would be really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Overall, America. Yes. <laughs> American, American water. Okay. 
When you're on stage, and it's like it's my main thing, like at the end of Here I Stand, mm. when literally it's <coughs> and so uh, here it's back, it's like wow, it's it's shivers down my spine. It makes you quite proud, like, yeah. it makes everything that you did, like, sure, it's quite hard work, mm. um, regardless of how much fun you make it look. Right? Um, but it's, it's really hard work, you're away from home for a long period of time, um, you can really great when you're like, getting into these nerves and stuff like that, so it makes it really, really worth it when you actually go out and people actually really respect and understand what you do. So that's probably the biggest and nicest feeling you can get, the most gratification. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Sabrina Langford said, are there any bands that you look up to and that inspire you? <laughs> we are, yeah, it's a question. <laughs> um, um, I like so much random ground. It's, um, my iPod goes from Marmosette to the fly. Especially when you're in alphabetical, because then it literally goes. Um, Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all, you know, the, the, the genre that we play, there's a really standard influence. It's like the Kissing the Sars, the Yumi of Six, that's all, all yeah. these ones. But then, at the same time, you know, well, with, our, with, with, our, with, our, with our future writing, etc. I mean, Tricks and Games was, you know, it's, it's a star for us. It was our first release, and the influence is very clear to see on that. But obviously, we just do all the time every Kissing the Sars, Yumi of Six, that sound really comes across. But with the diversity of our influences, that's really something that we're hoping to bring across in our future work. Yeah, it's like right now, we've, like, if you compare it to like a product, it's like we've just made like Panda Pop, but with the next stuff, we're going to be like Pepsi, Cola, Fanta, and Batanga. So like, we're going to like increase to be the yeah, next. Like 30 like at least a quick Yeah, Panda Pop, we're going to be Pepsi. No, the, 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 the thing that they're trying to get across a bit is that the writing at the moment is definitely something that's very exciting for us. Yeah. Um, Chiefs and Games have been obviously we're all very proud of the first release for all of us, not only as Taking Haley, but as individual musicians. So it's really exciting now to actually come into this new phase of Taking Haley, which is starting to happen now with our writing. So you'll see a lot more different influences kind of come into play from everybody, um, and not just the, the obvious kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's going to be... That's an easy way to start having a new team. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. So that's watch, the watch, this, watch this space. This one's from Matt Price. He said, what has been the highlight of your career as Taking Haley? There's been so many, hasn't there? Um, we've had a lot, like, we've had a lot of like, that show was a big thing. It was, I mean, so it was Waterworks. Yeah, that's what I mean, that's what I mean, that's what I mean. So many, like, you know I mean, Matt, Matt Fly sold out coming one, opening that walk tour to thousands of people, that's and slam and dunk, and I saw it. That's probably the, probably the most, the most proudest that I've been, you know, I've everyone who has something they did, something they're into, they have something they show off about. So, you know what I mean? To be quite proud of you say, everyone's been nervous if, if I say this, and the McFly thing is always the first. Oh, yeah, we played with McFly once, and everyone goes, oh, wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but then, more ideally, it's probably Sam Day, uh, Wolf Tour last year. It was just absolutely insane. It was literally front to back, and people singing and bouncing. Yeah. And but but there's also, like, our, for, like, our hometown show, last or when we did yeah, Academy 2, which was, too. like, cornerstone to us, we thought, well, like, we can actually pour this map down at people in Birmingham now, which just looks insane. Yeah, so it really, but there is so many fantastic kind of achievements which we've already achieved so far 
it's a short, short smaller amount of time. Um, but I don't think that's, for me personally, it's not enough. I'm, I'm looking forward to growing and doing bigger and better things. Me to ready is something that's always been a big dream for me. So eventually one day it would be nice to... Be there's always to one step up. up. There's always something to look forward to and always <laughs> to dream of. Whether we do, look enough to go and be first on in Reading, which is the dream, there's always the even head further head 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 halfway through my stage. So many moments. And Lindsay, if you want to stop doing it, just me next question. Do you ever get recognised, and if so, where's the strangest place it's ever happened? In Tesco, to my mum. Mm -hmm. When I'm at work, at a supermarket, people will come in. That's always weird. I remember uh, me and Tom, until recently, we used to work in the bars and we used to get people coming in like, Oh, it's you guys! You signed this? Sign my cocktail? No. I meant what? Next question. Right, if you each could choose from your favourite band members to create your dream band, who would the members be? Alistair, Tom, Jay, and another guitarist. And like, these are my best friends. And I know yeah, we, don't, we don't know anything of the right. If we wanted a different band, we'd have a different band with a different name. We chose each other. Well, that's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> If in your heads you were each creating a super band, who would the members ah, be? Ah, so it's like fantasy football room. Right? It's not your own band, it's oh, a okay, band you right. would like so to see. Singer. So who would you pick singer? No, I wouldn't change it. I know, yeah. oh, no, you would have had a super group. Like, not that you're in, you would see a super group. Well, that's not a super group. Folks should walk in places. This is my super group. Oh, well, my super group is, is already in place with Old and Vashit, so you've got Pierce and Al, Vic, and Mike, the drummer and singer, and you've got Johnny Cray, and you put Ken and Quinn in there. You just want to join Oh, no, I'm just saying <laughs> that's a super group. That's a sick line of so many sick singers and drummers. Next question. It lasts on. What's the dream? Uh, well, well, there's there's the dream. I had a dream about animals and I was following. I woke up. There's nothing like Ian Watkins. I woke up and, and punched out in the face in the night because I don't think I was dreaming about punching out in the face. <laughs> No, the dream, I think, on a serious note, though, is uh, just continue, write, continue writing music, continue in the same vein. Um, you have to be in this for more than 10 years. Yeah, but eventually, to actually earn a career out of it, make a career out of it. At the moment, it's, it's, it's more than a hobby, don't get me wrong. And we do take it very, very seriously. We don't take ourselves seriously. We don't, seriously. Want, to, we we don't, don't take, take ourselves seriously. We're going to do this 24 7. Yeah, but we don't take ourselves seriously, but our music we do. And I think that is going to be the big thing on the next album, and everyone kind of realises. Um, this isn't just something that's going to stick around for five minutes and then kind of put it out. Um, so the dream is to kind of make a, a good career out of this. It's something that's definitely going to stand the test of time and really kind of show what we're all about. I don't want, like, I don't want this to be a good band and like, you, you have really good in one year and that's it. But come on, so have a good ten years, you go, right, oh shit, like this year we're doing like, I'm ready in like, first time art and then it, like, Right, the rest of that, you're going to go America, I'm going to go first. These different progression. Progression, yeah. Progression, right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Hi. Bye bye.